welcome back to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. You may notice something different, <laughs> depending on where you are. Yeah, uh, if you're on SoundCloud, this. welcome to the normal podcast. Uh, uh, welcome in, welcome in. Thanks for coming back. Or sorry, the thanks podcast for, app. Uh, thanks for tuning in and listening. Da, 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 da. If you're on YouTube, <laughs> um, you'll notice that you only see our beautiful logo uh, because for really two reasons. One, uh, it's more pretty than us. Two... Um, uh, we've realized that with all of the ideas for content that we have going on and mm -hmm. that we've actually already started implementing in some cases, uh, we're, we kind of have to cut time somewhere yep. and save some yep. time somewhere. Yep. Pipeline's getting a little clogged. The biggest time-consuming thing is not editing the podcast episode. Oh, it's no, no, exporting no. the podcast episode. You wouldn't think it unless you uh, create content. But uh, Kev, how often or how long rather? Uh, it takes it take? between ten and like mm -hmm. thirteen hours. Got it. So like half a day. Yeah. Cool. Um, cool. 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 And cool, it's cool, only cool. because like we shoot it usually a fairly high res you know yeah. file. We're at like two point seven k or something like that. Because if we have zits, we want you to we experience you to those them. too. We um, you know especially if they pop in the middle. Uh, but. Oh. <laughs> Um, we thought uh, give Kevin power. <laughs> <laughs> we thought to save on resources, time, etc. We're gonna go audio only for a while. See how we mm -hmm. like it. Mm -hmm. See how you guys like it. Uh, if there's a resounding "Hey, we need video back. We just need to see yeah. your smiling faces," uh, then we will bring it back. But yeah. for the time being, it just makes the most sense. Uh, but before we get into today's episode, mm. we do have to mention it is still sponsored by our good friends over at Cardsphere.com. <laughs> Fantastic place. Uh, if you're looking to buy, sell, or trade magic cards, it is the absolute best place to go. The Mac Daddy. The, the Mac Daddy. The granddad. The uh, dude. The sweet old man. It is. It is just. It's golden. Like, I couldn't. I was thinking of something really inappropriate to say, so, and I couldn't say it. Yeah, well, so, just like, we don't have video. Doesn't mean we're still not. No, family we're friendly. still family friendly. Um, but anyway, uh, really, honestly, a great place to go. Great resource. Go check them out. Uh, if you're interested in buy list pricing. Um, anyway, let's jump right in, guys. The random card of the day in three, two, one. Butcher's mm. Cleaver. All right. So <laughs> this is right. from OG Innistrad, yeah, uh, but was is. reprinted in Bless versus Curse. Uh, it's a three cast artifact equipment. The equipped creature gets plus three, plus zero. Uh, as long as it's a human, it has lifelink, and it's an equip cost of three. So in total, you're investing six mana into this to just get it onto a creature, which makes it not very good <laughs> it's fine and limited it's filler. And like a if you got a bunch of human synergy and this comes along it's fine and limited sure. um get i mean three power it's not gonna shake a stick up no adding that to a cleaver up yeah um, yeah that's great and then lifelink again and limited is pretty i mean it's pretty it's fine yeah you'll um stall any races that way you'll win races technically yeah. if you've got uh got lifelink so this is again limited it's fine, but that's the only place. Yeah, that's literally the only place. And honestly, in limited, I wouldn't be super excited about this card. Like, it's fine, like you said. I'd play yeah. it. Like, it's not terrible. I mean, there's a bunch of really cheap equipment back in the industry <laughs> that went on humans and did stuff, and they yeah. were good in limited. Yeah, again, certainly. But only in limited, so. Yeah, that's I mean, exactly right. I think this is probably the best of them, too. Well, it's up there as one of the best. I actually don't like this one as much, because on something that's giving so much power and no toughness, I'd rather have first strike. Um, then lifelink. Then lifelink. And the only reason I say yeah. that is because it'll probably trade off with something still if it's not getting that buff in, in toughness. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's gonna take something out and you're gonna gain some life, but it's mm -hmm. kind of more unless you're already in a winning position, it's kind of more of a one shot deal. Yeah. Whereas first strike can dig you out of a position a little bit more. Um because it allows you to block more effectively or something like that. You know what I mean? Sure. But I mean stick this on a on a a cheap guy, you don't mind losing. No, 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 no. And then they seriously have to consider blocking because you, yeah. A, you'll gain the life anyway. B, yep. they'll trade for a, a creature that they don't really want to block anyway. Sure. You and know? it is an equipment, so you don't lose the equipment if exactly. the creature just dies. So exactly. you, you can always re-equip. There was um, one really sweet uh, artifact equipment spell that came from the original Innistrad block. I think it was... Sh maybe Shadows. It was the Binding Blade, Erebus. I don't remember which side it came out in. Hmm. But it costs one oh. to cast, yeah, yeah. seven to equip. Oh, and flipped yeah. Flipped into that okay. big, yeah, yeah. chunky, I know was, That was OG demon. and Estrada, I think. Yeah. 
Or Avison, maybe. No, I don't know. Anyway. I don't remember which one, but yeah. yeah that, that, that was sweet. It was that one was just fun. I put that... So I played that in standard in a um, uh, Invisible Stalker deck. Yep. Uh... <laughs> And one of it, your favorites? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it was a uh, it was a blue green invisible stalker Erebus deck. So yes. you ramp into being able to put that on a stalker. Yep. Swing in, flip the blade. Now you have a thirteen thirteen. Yep. It was good, man. Yeah. I mean, it was well, sweet. no, hold on. I just lied. It was fun, <laughs> man. <laughs> that was a brew for sure. Yeah. That was a brew. Anyway. Anyway, moving on. Well, what are we gonna talk about today? Man, we gon we gonna talk about that sweet meta. <laughs> It's less charming, I think, if you can't see me. So I'm going to try to be um, normal. We're going to talk about the standard meta um, because we just had two, our first two PTQs post rotation. Yep. Just went around. Uh, and they were enlightening in a way, maybe? Certainly for me. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. Uh, <clears throat> they were interesting. So, yes. I mean, we'll jump right in. Yeah, go for um, it. To preface this a little bit, I'm just going to, this is, I'm going to use this. You know what? I'm going to use your computer. To oh, yeah, that's my fine. Thing. Um, so we already kind of spoiled the results of part of this um, in a a la a deck tech. Oh, I did that. Sorry, guys. No. Don't <laughs> apologize. Bring the people what they need to know. It's more timely. Yeah. Anyway, um, these happened uh, the 7th and the 13th, respectively. It's now, as of recording this, into the 20s. So... <laughs> That, well, behind. <laughs> behind, but th- th- I mean, that came out first, the, the deck text. So yeah, we yeah. got to get to it. Um, but PTQs are always, these were online Pro Tour qualifiers, but we have had some quality uh, players come out of MTGO uh, who played on the Pro Tour. So you always want to look at these as yeah. still being relevant to the meta, of course. Um, now, the... the uh, Top eight of Grand Prix, all that other stuff, all the other ways to qualify are, I think, a little more popular in terms of what people research. Yeah. But these were still uh, super relevant. Yeah. So we'll go into the one that happened on the 7th first, 7th of this month. Uh, and we saw a bunch of different decks in the top eight, which is sweet. Yes. Uh, we don't normally see this even the first few weeks after post rotation. Um, the meta kind of shakes out already by the time the important tournaments happen. Right. Um, but this was neat. We saw, let me count them real quick here. I think that's seven different decks yep. in the top eight, which is awesome. Really, it's it's like seven and a half. There's two decks that, are, that differ slightly, um, and we'll talk about that. So kicking it off in the top eight, we'll just go through them all. Is it Spells? Kevin, how do you feel about Is it Spells? I love Is it Spells. So this is one that we did a deck tech on a few weeks ago. I love this deck. This is a little bit of a different version than the one uh, that we did the deck tech on. And the only reason I say that, mostly we're trimming down on the creatures by four. Mm -hmm. Uh, The the deck that we originally talked about ran Enigma Drake alongside the Crackling Drake. Uh, Obviously, we don't have Enigma Drake anymore. We don't. Well, we do technically still have it in standard. Uh, It was in M19. Really? Yeah. Um, oh, I thought that was a... Um, no. I mean, it was Amon Kett, but right. uh, they reprinted an M19, I believe. I had um, no idea. Yep. That's why I did that deck tech. Um, but anyway, crispy. so this one's trimming down on the creatures a little bit, really buffing up the instants and sorcery slots with 28 in total, which Ooh. is insane. But it is as it spells, so it makes sense. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, this deck is sweet. Go watch the deck tech if you want the the details on it. This is just really fun. It's a fun version of Is It. Yep. Um, that's always kind of been around in, in some flavor. Or Reminiscent another. of the, I, I've said this multiple times, but the sort of Kiln Fiend, Nivix mm-hmm. Cyclops, where you buff up a creature yep. based off of spells, add yep. value yep. to every spell. It's awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's popular in many a format. Yep. Um, we're going to talk about this one later. <laughs> so we'll go to this next deck. Dragon Deck Wins is what it's titled. Um, <laughs> this one's pretty fun. It is a uh, red-green dragon ramp deck. So it runs things like Sarkon Fireblood. Red, white. It's red, white. Uh, should it not be green? It is only red, white. Yep. Man, that's what I meant in the first place. <laughs> uh, Sarkon Fireblood is this rampy thingy. Hey. Um, I like Sarkon. Th- I mean, this Sarkon is so niche that I'm not like I'm not sold on it. No, but um, he's a three mana planeswalker, and I like that. I, Just in general. <laughs> yeah, but like he's. He does one thing yeah. pretty well. I'm just not like he's he's fine in this deck, but this yeah. deck isn't stupendous. That's fair. right. Um, I mean it it works 
exactly how it sounds, you ramp into some dragons. So it runs things like Runaway Steamkin, which is nice to uh, add counters, eventually spend those counters for mana, Sarkon mm-hmm. Fireblood to give you two extra mana for dragons. And then things like Lathless, Dragon Queen, or Lathis. No, it's oh. Liss. Lathless. That's right. Interesting. Right? Uh, which is cool. Yeah, I like that. Uh, four Demanding Dragons, which I thought Demanding Dragons were pretty powerful. Yeah, I like those a lot. Definitely. Two Varix Blade Wings. Great. Yeah, these are solid. Um, it's also got some Rekindling Phoenix just because this is a just a solid card. It's a staple in red decks, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, right now it should be, honestly. Four mana, uh, a recurring 4-3 flyer. Yep. It's very good. It's hard to kill. Yeah. Because uh, kill a Phoenix, you still got to deal with this little guy. Um, and then for the white, you, you have things like Justice Strike, mm-hmm. which is just solid removal right now in, in, in red-white. Um, you got a bunch of burn stuff. Uh, Shivian Fire, Spit Flame, Lightning Strike. A one Lava Coil. Lava Coil, we've covered it, is a uh, pretty powerful spot removal. Yep. Um, even though it's sorcery speed, don't don't let that scare you. It is four mana, and it is sweet. So if you want to see these lists, by the way, in detail, uh, they are all on MTG Top 8. Yep. We'll have to go over that in just a second. Um, so this deck works pretty simply. Um, it's looking to power out dragons and then use... Things like Lathless as an engine, Varix Blade Wing as well, uh, just to beat face. Yep. Put big value creatures out, remove threats. It's pretty simple, straightforward. I have no qualms with that deck. Nope. It's fine. Um, then coming in at number f- the fifth spot, number five, Boros Aggro. So a uh, little background for me. Coming into the standard season, I was really big on Boros Aggro. I thought it was going to be very, very strong. And it's kind of, it's, it's like high tier two i'd say yeah i mean i think i would agree i think it's really really good and limited mm-hmm. but i think constructed it loses just a bit uh because i just feel like there's more powerful powerful things that you can do but agreed that being said it steals wins really well i mean it's very aggro yeah you know what I mean? well and, and kind of the the theme i think for red white this season is boomer bust a little bit mm. um you talk about the there's a uh, a red white goblins deck mm-hmm. mostly red but a little bit of red white yep. uh, there's a red white angels there's this boris aggro there's a boris midrange and all of them feel to me as if they are doing everything or nothing and trying to yeah, just yeah. catch up um this is a deck that's can go off i'm not going to say very easily but when it works it is tough to be um and that's really due to its angel synergy uh, working with Shalai, Voice of Plenty, uh, Aurelia, Exemplar of Justice, Lyra, Dawnbreaker, but then the Mac Daddy, in my opinion, Resplendent Angel. This card's so good. I, I mean, I, I think it's the best three drop in white right now. Yeah. Um, you can feel... F- Don't at me, bro. But feel free <laughs> to correct me if you think I'm wrong. Uh, I, I'm not, but Resplendent Angel. <laughs> it is a 3-3 three, three for 3, flying at the beginning of each end step. If you gained 5 or more life this turn, create a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token with flying and vigilance and then it's got a mana ability until end of turn respond angel gets plus two plus two and gains lifelink so on itself it is its own uh proc yeah essentially if you want to be swinging with it now obviously there's other cards that grant stuff uh lifelink lira Dawnbreaker, other angels you control get plus one plus one and have lifelink uh it's a five five on its own with lifelink yep like this deck is designed to work very well together the problem the problem and shalai fixes this for you um, is that you remove some of these pieces and the whole thing falls apart. Yeah. Like, you prioritize, <clears throat> excuse me, killing Lyra Dawnbreaker, killing uh, Resplendent Angel, killing Shalai. Aurelia, honestly, as scary as she is, she is not a high-priority target. She pumps stuff, but if you kill the rest of the board, she just pumps herself and mm-hmm. she turns to a 4-5, which is, I mean, that's 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 good. Yeah, it's great. But that's not the engine. It's right. just a 4 or 5 flyer, which you can deal with And later. it's an angel, so it's synergistic. Right. Now, those aren't the only creatures this deck has. You're also looking at a Danto Vanguard. Uh, we didn't see this a ton in Constructed until now. Mm-hmm. Um, we saw it a little bit in Night Decks, but, um, I mean, it's not a super interesting add. It's just, you know, it's there. It is hard to kill. If you're gaining life, you can pay for life and give it indestructible, so it's, you know... It's it, going to sneak out some attacks in. Right. It's, it's like going to be high value towards the late yeah. game. You know what I mean? Um, Knight of Grace is a two mana, uh, two, two night creature. We, we see, we've we seen this a ton since Dominaria. Yeah. 
there was a really dominant night deck for a, a brief moment in time. Yeah. Um, but it, it was it was still competitive for, for a short while. Um, but this is a well-rounded card. Knight mm-hmm. of Grace has a lot of text on it, which I like. <laughs> First strike, Hexproof from Black. Knight of Grace gets plus one, plus zero, as long as any player controls a black permanent. Um, I mean, that's just cool. It's yeah. going to be 3-2 with Hexproof from a color. That's fine. For two, I'm cool with that. Yep. Um, but like I said, this deck suffers from kind of in the same theme as a combo deck. If you take some of its pieces early, yeah. it has a hard time recovering. Anything like ultra focused on the synergistic side of things. Mm-hmm. Normally, if you think of like what that deck is trying to do, um, and I, I don't mean this as in they're trying to be defensive, but they're trying to sort of build up their wall mm-hmm. with all of these individual pieces. And they all work together to sort of form either this huge attacking force or this combo win or something along those lines. And so what that deck, as you're saying, suffers from, and this goes for any format anywhere, really, is if you pull the right piece out of that wall, the whole Mm -hmm. thing just collapses. And it doesn't work as well. And so while it it sort of is the classic ceiling floor thing where like the ceiling is extraordinarily high for decks like that because all the cards work so well together. Mm -hmm. But... Again, it's easy to sort of take that back down to Definitely. to floor level and make it not quite so powerful. Um, yeah, I do really like this deck. I do um, too, actually. Looking at this, it's just I dig it. yeah, it's just. Uh, I mean, we just went over it, unfortunately. Um, it it runs some other stuff. Death and Clear and Justice Strike, Lightning Strike, Conclave Tribunal for its removal package, and then for your removal spell. Yeah, Conclave Tribunal. By the way, if you're in white, you run you it. You run it. It turns eventually into like a one mana yeah uh remove enchant it's pretty cool pretty cool uh history banalia this will be in standard as long as it's allowed to be in standard yeah i mean play Dang, in it's standard. a 30 or a 25 30 dollar card right now yeah this does work holy crap yeah three turns later after you've gotten a few of these yeah, yeah. other bad boys out swinging with a bunch of knights especially if you have some knight of graces out mm-hmm. there uh a history of banalia swing can be pretty lethal yeah it also makes your opponents hold uh removal and 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 different uh answers yeah. until that turn yep. um just to you know make sure you're not you don't have a crazy pop off um so we'll move on to the number four spot now just guy control uh, this particular deck. This is a weird deck. This is a weird deck. <laughs> I like just got control in the meta right now. Yeah. This particular <laughs> deck. Um, Kev, what do, do you want to say anything about this before I give it my? Uh, do you want me to say what's wrong with it? If you, yeah, go ahead, so, Kev. Okay. What's wrong with this deck? Here's the deal with this deck, guys. Um. It runs 27 lands, 21 instants and sorceries, and 12 other spells, none of yeah, which yeah. really work as a win condition. <laughs> no, um, no. Now, I, that being said, there are ways, there's a way to win, uh, which is right. basically flipping Azor's gateway or doing whatever and then playing expansion and explosion and just dealing a bunch of damage. Right. Which is, like, fine. Like, whatever. But, like, that's so easy to disrupt. I don't... Yeah. I just don't understand. <laughs> like, I don't either. Um, <laughs> this deck, it, it it kind of surprises me that this did so well. Um, I mean, it has answers for literal everything. That's the thing is, I can I tell you what my um, conspiracy scenario is in my yeah, head? Yeah, do it. Uh, I think people conceded way too early. I think that's the case. When they I don't know. This. They didn't have deck lists, so like they right. wouldn't have known what's in the deck. Right. So... Yeah, this is sort of just playing the system more than it's playing the meta itself. You know that's, what I mean? Uh, that's conjecture on our end. Yeah, but, but honestly, I kind of believe it. <laughs> so uh, we'll go over the spells specifically. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's giving me some. Are you dying over there? Of uh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about the spells, Will. I'd love to. <laughs> uh, so three chemisters insight. It just draws stuff. Nothing yep. nothing fancy. Four deafening clarion. A good answer in red white. That's fine. Yeah, uh, solid. Nice Against sl- all the aggro decks. Right. A nice board sweeper. Uh, four expansion explosion. Uh, explosion's really what you want to focus on, but expansion yeah. says copy target instant or sorcery spell with converted mana cost four or less. You may choose new targets for the copy, which is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, side note, put a button in that. <laughs> uh Really, you would just need to cast Explosion for 10 and then copy it with Expansion. 
if you have another copy of this card in hand. Yeah. Um, which is fine, but that's the win right there. Right. Yeah. That's 20 damage. Which, <clears throat> with Azur's Gateway, isn't uh, out of the question, right? So your your biggest hope, and is what I think that they have focused on here, mm-hmm. um, is to make sure you don't take a bunch of damage. Make sure you keep at least 10 life yeah. to be able to do that, and that's how yeah, you yeah. win. Um, now, granted, you're it, it takes you a little while to do that. Yeah. Um, a little while, <laughs> but I think that, that that is the most that's the most optimal route to win. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so four expansion explosion, three settle the wreckage, which is excellent. Yep, excellent card. Four sinister sabotage counter target spell surveil one, which is nice. Three syncopate, which is excellent. I love syncopate. Then we've got four Azur's gateway, which seems pretty important. Yeah. Um. And then sorry, four seal away and four to fairy hero of dominaria. Yep. Um, high value cards here, uh, but again, I mean, it is pure control. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Like sure. it's just draw a counter, draw a counter until it gets to its one really singular win con. Yeah, and that's insane to me. Um, I like the concept. Yeah, what I would want is way more like. Uh, creature removal, yeah. honestly, because I think that's the only way this deck loses if it takes too much damage. Uh, well, but, and so that's why I think they have so many sweepers. Sure. Because Deafening Clairon sure. is going to deal with the early game, <clears throat> which is yep. what you're going to expect to see a lot of because this is sort of the early shakeout of the meta. Tends to be, not always, but it tends to be the aggro decks kind of take over for a little while. And Deafening Clairon deals with so many of those threats, even the Chain Whirlers. Yeah. Um, Settle the wreckage. I feel like is sort of the in a pinch card. Hence why there's one less of them. Right. Um, right. Right. But it deals with literal any creature board. You know what I mean? As long yeah. as they're swinging at you, which they will be. You, they're not going to miss that opportunity. Right. And so, right. Um, you know, it's like it doesn't have individual creature removal, but it's got the sweepers and, and enough of them to be able to take care of them regularly. Sure. <laughs> like almost a sixth of the deck is you know like that's kind yeah. of insane <laughs> yeah yeah that's fair um now it it is worth noting that in the sideboard there are creatures yeah three lira dawn breakers four history of benaya which i know don't at me isn't technically a creature it spits out creatures it makes creatures it. calm down back there <laughs> stop typing it i understand um or writing that that hasty letter i get it um <laughs> So and there's one more bane fire for just an extra uh, yeah. pocket for your gateways. Um, I think that this deck is really janky, and I hope that that doesn't offend our deck maker limited power. <laughs> but uh, it is. It, I think it's kind of janky. I think so too. Yeah. I think it works online, like you said, partially <laughs> because nobody knows what your full deck list is, right? Um, Unless they somehow see your deck in game, they're not gonna know. And like, sure, it just like it feels like it's playing the system more than it's playing the actual game. You know what I mean? Like, and I can it's respect just, that. And I get it. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. I think that's the not the issue with playing online, but I think that's kind of part of the thought process when you are gonna play competitively online is that you know people aren't gonna see your deck list, so like, yeah, play around that as much as you can. Definitely, it's just one magic is like poker and that it's all about hidden. Information. Oh yeah, girl. All right, so we are getting to um, my two favorite decks uh, <laughs> that came out of this tournament. Esper Control is the first one we'll talk about. The next is Grixis Midrange. We'll get to that in a moment. Yeah. Um, Esper Control though here <laughs> is pretty much classic Esper Control. Uh, we see a good mix of instants and sorceries, a couple one ofs, a few things here, um, and one creature, which is the big <laughs> win. Uh, four to fairy because you have to run to fairy. Yep. Um, yeah. Kev, anything you want to say about this? No, I actually do really like Esper as a color combo, and it, mm-hmm. I've always found it to be, like, almost good enough. Um, and my hope is that with this meta, and I do believe that with this deck list even as sort of the starting point, that we do have the option of maybe taking it to that, I hope, really competitive kind of sol- solid level because we do have a lot of good cards in here. Mm-hmm. Teferi being the biggest, um, obviously, and I think Chromium sure. being the win con is actually really, really sweet as well because... Yeah. 
it's not really a card that I was like, oh, this is you know constructed, mm-hmm. gonna win it, you know. Um, sure, sure. Not on the onset. Sweet. Yeah, but it's sweet. Um, Chromium's hard to kill, you know. Yeah, he. Yeah, yeah. So he's good against uh, a multitude of different decks. Um, so I like it a lot. Uh, but I'll talk about a few of the value cards in this rather than the deck list itself because again with control decks like this there's always tweaking to the list that you can mm-hmm. uh that you want to do um a few big things though moment of craving has come out i think is just the best value removal in black mm-hmm. in terms of its cmc versus effect uh it's like the mini contempt right target creature gets minus two minus two until end of turn you gain two life yep um this just takes care of so many little threats that would get worse later Right, your Goblin War Boss, mm-hmm. your uh, Tajik, stuff like that. Right. Um, it's ju- it's just it's solid. Uh, main phase two, it gets even stronger post combat depending on your deck. So it's got implications in other decks too. I like that a lot. Yep. Um, uh, cast down is uh, a three of in this feature kind of heavily. Uh, I was always kind of iffy on this card, but I've grown to accept its spot. <laughs> in black <laughs> removal it is just so good it's good it's efficient and yeah. that's the key very much so um my i think my favorite in the on the card i'll talk a little bit more about um just in length in terms of everything else is ritual of soot love this card this i mean this is fantastic this is going to yeah. keep so many aggro decks out of the uh win column yeah this card alone uh so ritual of soot if you don't know <laughs> destroy all creatures with converted mana cost three or less for four too colorless too black uh i love it i love it so much yeah um i i've been brewing with a um blue black deck myself Mm -hmm. and this card was featured heavily in mainboard and sideboard yep um it's it's fantastic there are plenty of decks you want to use this against and we'll get into the big mac daddy in just a second yes (laughs) Uh, but ritual is is very good i think right now they are like two dollars three dollars yep they're pretty cheap buy them up do it today. Hey, do it today. And Why wait? <laughs> any of you Carolina kids will know what that is. <laughs> um, I think we've all seen Blue Cross Blue Shield commercials. Yeah. Not a sponsor. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, not a ton to talk about this deck. It doesn't do anything fancy. It is a bare bones control Esper deck. Y- y- you know, Sweeper thing. <laughs> what you see is what you get. Kevin, anything else special you want no, to talk no, about? No, Again, I, cool. I'm pretty excited about this deck, though. I yeah. do want to see how this shakes out uh, yeah. as the meta progresses. I do think that this is kind of the ceiling for Esper right now. I think so, too. I think it's going to get better, though, once we have mm-hmm. Azorius as a guild. Sure. Uh, because certainly we'll get some powerhouse cards, I imagine, uh, sure. from that. And so my hope is that, again, once the next set comes out, we'll actually get something that's a little bit more viable. Yeah, I, I think agree. it's. I think it's gonna happen. I agree. I w- I just I wouldn't put any. If you play mad fantasy magic, yeah, if that's still a thing, um, I wouldn't put just, you- just magic. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, yeah, but I wouldn't put any bets on Esper being super dominant. No, um, I don't think so. Not yet. Anyway, um, the next one, my favorite out of this list is Grixis Midrange. I like this one too. I think Grixis and blue black in general, any of those colors are this are pretty strong right now. I thought they'd be the strongest. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Oh, man. Um, but they have my favorite finisher in Doom Whisperer here. God, Flying so Trample, good. <laughs> pay two life, surveil two. It's fantastic. This is like, okay. You know, like, we always are like, oh, they're not going to print any, like, crazy powerhouse cards in standard. Because it's standard and they don't want it to be, like, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like Doom Whisperer is, like, kind of breaking that a little bit. Like, you just... Think? So on the face of it, for five you get a six six with flying and trample. Yeah, pretty dang good. Which is like that's pretty dang kinda good. stupid good, right? And then yes. not only that, but it smooths out draws by paying a couple life and it's like, yeah, that's worth it. Well that's the thing that makes it so good. So there was a card in uh Return to Ravnica that this reminded me of initially, mm. um, which was Desecration Demon. Yeah. It was a six six for four, but mm-hmm. you could anyone could sack a thing to tap it. Um but then it gave it a plus one plus one counter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So some decks could just turn it off, but other decks could only stall it. Yeah. Um, or just accept that there's a six six beater. Yeah. Just come to kill him. And uh, now what that what its weakness was is mm-hmm. that you could remove it and it's fine. With Doom Whisperer, you still get value even if they try to remove it. Yeah. Okay. Double lightning strike. Already that's a two for one, but that'll yep. kill it, right? 
So then you, as the Doom Whisperer controller, can just say, all right, that's fine. How many times do I want to surveil yeah, to get exactly. value out of this? Like, how many surveil triggers is worth <laughs> five mana? I would argue do it twice. You surveil four times for yeah. five mana, essentially. You will know what your next draws are going to be, most likely, if you find some like useful stuff. Yeah. And if you don't find useful stuff, then you ditch it, mm -hmm. and you're mm -hmm. more, way more likely to actually get to something mm -hmm. useful. So it's just like... Okay, well, you know what they're playing. If they've got some big threat, cool. Just surveil until you find a removal spell. <laughs> like it doesn't. Yeah. Even if they're removing it, it doesn't <laughs> matter. <laughs> right, right. Um, this doesn't. This is much weaker in the mirror. Interestingly enough, um, yeah. I like um, uh, Dream Eater in the mirror more than this. Yeah. Um, because this is a fun little how magic works moment. Little tidbit. Yeah. The uh, Dream Eater's triggers will all resolve before they get to do anything to Dream Eater. Yeah. Um, which is nice. <laughs> so you will always get that result, or you will always get that uh, uh, surveil and bounce effect before it dies. Yeah. Just based on how triggers yeah, stack, yeah. which is nice. Um, but this, I mean, it's it's just it's whoa. just sweet. It's a thirty dollar card, twenty five to thirty dollar <laughs> card. Uh, I think that speaks for us all. Yeah. Um, another cute card in this deck was of the Multifarious. Uh, I'm not gonna read it all. It's a bunch of stuff. Go look them up if you if you don't know. Essentially, it copies stuff. Yeah. He he makes more stuff. He makes yeah. more Doom Whispers for you. Basically. Uh, Nickel Bolus, which is a uh, real good card, I think. Yeah. Four four for four mana that does some mean stuff, then turns into a scary planeswalker. Can't beat it. Nope. Uh, Ravenous Chupacabra stayed in a value position for most of its life, even yeah. getting printed in a. Um, was it in a master set or? Uh, yeah, it was in like Masters twenty five or something like that. Yeah, as like the card from Amonkhet or whatever it was originally from. Right, Rivals. Um, they try to the pull things from different eras of Magic. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I think this got played briefly in Modern for a time, which might be why it was more considered, but it's yeah. not much anymore. No. Um, it's still a good card. It is. Don't get it's me wrong. fantastic and standard. It's yep. removal on a stick. Yep. So. Uh, Thief of Sanity as a four of. I love that. Uh, boys and girls. <laughs> um, Thief of Sanity is a good card. Yeah. If someone told you it's not, pity them. Pity the ignorant. We don't. Their sanity must have been stolen, dude. That's right. That's all it is. I'll, I won't harp on it anymore. That was I, bad, guys. I'm sorry. To, I tried to <laughs> hype you up a little bit. Thanks, there, but buddy. It's fine. Um, no, Thief of Sanity is a good card. Yes, um, definitely. Play it. it. Here's the thing. It's a trap for certain control decks. Um, yeah. Here's why. So, and this was, uh, this is for all you brewers out there. I, I realized this a little bit when I was making my own deck. Um, Blue Black kind of... You can go one of two ways, but you shouldn't ever really mix uh, either of them. So either, one, you play heavily into the disruption, uh, hand destruction, uh, kill spells, mm -hmm. uh, thief of sanity, stuff like that, kite seal freebooter right now, duress, you know, yeah. all that stuff. You play yeah, yeah. heavily into that. So you're essentially always tapping out to put a thing they have to answer or take a value threat from them. You're yeah. doing that. Or... You play a more traditional control route and you never tap out. So you're holding counters, you're holding removal, you play on the end step mm -hmm. of their turn to get a lot of value for your next turn, <laughs> all that stuff. So you wait. If they have something for you, you answer it. If they don't, you just draw cards, get more answers, and keep building up to that win. Yeah. Um, so you can go one of two ways. You shouldn't either go both because it just weakens both aspects, really. You'll either if you if you play duress on turn one, you don't have spell pierce. Right. If you play Thief of Sanity on turn three, you don't have a turn three counter. Right. So you have to make that choice which way you want to go with. Um, Thief of Sanity is super strong on turn <laughs> three, but in the right decks. Yep. Um, so that's what I'll say. The instants and sorceries, again, we won't harp too much. It's a mixture. Change it where, however you want. Yeah. What I think is interesting, the only card I'll mention is Dead Weight. I didn't think this would make main board in a lot of decks, but it's it, really efficient though. It is. It removes a ton of stuff. I yeah. like fungal infection, I think, a little bit better than dead weight, but dead weight kills more things. Yeah. So there's that. Uh fungal gets you a dude though. Yeah. And it's instant speed, so Yeah, and that is nice, but I don't know. I, I would it say can, like kind of meld it. Like play with both and see how way, you yeah. feel, but uh it's you know, I don't know which one's better. I just prefer playing at instant speed, but yeah. that's I mean Preference, Deadweight's more efficient, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> We've gotten 
the losers out of the way. <laughs> no offense. Uh, there is one more to talk about that did not take it. That we'll just briefly go over. Uh, we did a deck tech on the winning deck. Yep. Uh, Golgari Aggro took this tournament in a big way. Yeah. There's another deck, Golgari Explorer, that differed um, maybe on the onset kind of slightly, but I think it's actually pretty big, so we'll talk about that. Um, Golgari Explorer had a lot of the same cards. Golgari Fine Broker, Izani Thousand Eye, Jade Light Ranger, the Branch Walker, Chupacabra, Seeker Squire, Wild Growth Walker, all that stuff. Right. Biggest difference, though, this was actually a three-color deck. So they invested four slots into Night of Autumn, so they played a play set of these. Yeah. So I don't like this choice at all. I don't either. Knight of Autumn is an amazing card. Don't get me wrong. It's very strong. It might be one of the best to come out of guilds so far. Yeah. It's going to be played in other formats. Just trust me on that. <laughs> um, but what this does, it provides you, like, no synergy with the rest of your deck. Right. It, it's a good card. It's a 2-1. It can get bigger. It destroys <laughs> artifacts. You gain life. Cool. That's great. It doesn't do anything else with the rest of the deck, though, except that it's a creature in a graveyard eventually. Yeah. But so would any other creature. <laughs> the biggest thing to me, though, is it adds white mana to your mana pool. So in any kind of aggro deck, you stay as simple as you can with your mana base. Yeah. If you're playing cheap dudes on turn 2, turn 3, you want to always be able to play them. You're playing with the idea that the only way I don't get to play these cards is if I just don't get land. Yeah. Now, you're adding so many different variables when you add, all right, I need the right land, not just a land. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that, I believe, would really hinder this deck's chance at being viable. Uh, not to say that there's not an Abzan deck out there that would be good. I just don't think that... Because it really just added one card and a few different lands to the Golgari aggro deck mm -hmm. to make it a little bit weaker right there's a card in the sideboard but yeah again yeah. sideboards are sideboards <laughs> um so i i don't like this choice really i think it's interesting um so it plays to the toolbox element which is something sure. that i talked about in the deck tech um only because there's a lot of recursion i would say less in this list in particular yeah, because they had to put the knight of autumns in which right. is why i don't like it um but with all the recursive abilities i like the knight of autumn in general sure not in this list um Agreed. because they took out the find brokers they've only got one of in the main board one in the side mm -hmm. uh they do have the four find finality which is really the big sort of engine for that uh sort of recursive feel um and this gives you outs which i like it lets you destroy targets target enchantment target artifact lets you gain a few life if you feel like you need to it gives you a beater if you need to it's fine but as you said, when you're trying to really, really focus a deck on being aggro, you want the streamlined, as streamlined as possible, and having tap lands of a different color do mm -hmm. not help you, help you at all. Right. Um, and so I like Night of Autumn, not necessarily in this list. I like the idea with the recursiveness. Mm -hmm. I see why they did that, but I think there's a better way to do it. Yeah, I think uh, an Abzan mid-range deck, as Abzan decks tend to be, yeah. is in the works somewhere yeah. around the corner. We're going to get 100%. it, and, and it will be good. Yeah, um, I don't think this is the way to do it. Not like this, is what I'm saying. <laughs> um, it, it was a neat idea, just yeah, because yeah. Knight of Autumn is such a high-value card. But uh, uh, how much you had to invest in this, I think, is just is nuts. Yeah, they put a lot of... Uh... Four Sun Petal Grove, four Temple Garden... No planes, which is the, a good choice, but... Isolated chapels, two of them. Oh, I missed those. Yeah. Yeah, so there's so much, like, white mana they had to yeah. add in some description. An isolated chapel, tap card, right? Yep. Uh, Sun Petal Grove, tapped unless you haven't forced your plane. Yep. So you're just making this deck slower. Now, why this deck is... Why Gilgari Agra works so well, I think we went over the deck deck, <laughs> of course, but uh, it just works in turning these low value creatures into higher value creatures later mm -hmm. and just beating phase yeah which knight of autumn won't do it can get bigger mm -hmm. it just doesn't help the rest of the deck doesn't explore right it doesn't pull yeah, creatures yeah. back to just keep these low other value than dudes giving coming you outs, out it doesn't help you all that much i would argue that you can put a sideboard destroy enchantment card yeah in there yeah. if you're worried about enchantments as an out well you also have vivian reed which blows up enchantments if i'm not mistaken uh yep. yeah yeah 
Um, and there's so this version again uh, in comparison to the one that we re- we talked about originally mm-hmm. uh, does it runs way less planeswalkers. Um, so this one only has one relic seeker and one Vivian Reed. Mm-hmm. The other one that we did the deck tech on, I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was something like four and three of both of each Frasca. So there was like yeah. I think a playset of the Golgari Queen, the new one. I might be wrong on that. And then three Relic Seeker. Um, and so it didn't really need a Knight of Autumn because it had so much enchantment removal yeah. just off of the planes. It also had Vivian Reed in the sideboard uh, as a draw engine and an out to the artifacts and enchantments and things. So it's like, it's that feels like a much more streamlined version than throwing in a whole other color just for Knight of Autumn. Like right. that just feels so unnecessary yeah. to me. Yeah. Um, that I I don't know I'm yeah. not a fan of that. Now we're not here just to bash no. these deck makers. Great job making it to a, a top eight in yeah, a fantastic. PTQ. That's awesome. Um, but again, I don't. This is not the way I would have gone. That being said, <laughs> the big dog of the day, yeah, Golgari Agro. So the winners of your first PTQ, first Grand Prix, first Open, first whatever, the deck that wins really gets a spotlight on it. You either see decks tailored to beat it, or well, I'll really say both decks yeah. tailored to beat it, or an influx of that deck in whatever yep. meta. Um, and unfortunately, usually the former takes a little bit of time to <laughs> catch up. We don't necessarily have the um, excuse me, I was fighting myself there. I was wondering. We don't usually have the answer. Yeah, that fast, and we yeah, and yeah. we really don't hear. Um, this deck, I think. I mean, it just got better over the week, right? <laughs> this deck is a little bit different than the one we spoiled. Uh, three Relic Seeker, three Golgari, Golgari Queen, I can speak. <laughs> one Vivian Reed, Elder Three Born, da 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 stuff like that. But it's got your basic package. Yep. Uh, Ravenous Chupacabra, Murfolk, Branch Walker, Llanowar Elves, Jade Light, Golgari, Find no. Broker. Interestingly, this does not have the Find Finality, which I think um, right. is a little bit weird. Or the uh, or the Walker. Yeah. Um, but still, I mean, it's the basic principle of playing high-value spells. All of the creatures have EOT abilities is the idea, basically. So even if they die, even if you have to trade them off, it's fine because yeah. you got your your EOT ability. So it's like you're fine trading off creatures in the early game, which means you're just going to outrace or outpace, I should say, um, the, the, aggro, the pure aggro decks, I would say. Because yeah. this... While it is labeled an aggro deck, feels a little bit more mid rangey to me. Uh, mm-hmm. It's got a lot more controlling elements, um, yeah. but it still is looking to beat face with a bunch of these little dudes that just happen to have really good abilities. Yeah, agreed. Um, the only change I make to this deck is put in the two take out Plague Crafter from the main board. Put yeah. in two of the uh, Undergrowth instance target creature gets minus X minus X. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, uh, Necrotic Growth? Yes. Yeah. Because I think in this deck it's great. Yeah, it is good. You're playing, set. you would play at that point 19 creatures. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. They're all yeah. cheap. Yep. Play a bunch. Um, but yeah, this deck is kind of coming Necrotic out. Wound, not Growth. What the heck you am I right. talking about? <laughs> uh, I mean, this deck came out in a big way. Yeah. In the um, PTQ following this event, this <laughs> happened the 7th, a few days later. Golgari aggro got uh, real good. <laughs> uh, uh, real good. Yeah. Uh, we see one, two, three, four, five in this. Uh, this isn't even the other PTQ. This was a. This is in Lincoln. This is some other one. Yeah, this is a more recent one. This yeah, happened yeah. two days ago. It did still win it. Yeah, still won it. There's five copies in the uh, <laughs> in the top eight. I mean, it is twenty two percent of the current meta. Yeah, that is a lot. Uh yeah. It's a little more than a lot. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. It's nuts. Um, this was the... the Texas one that, was the one that we did the deck tech on. Yes. The one that won uh, the PTQ online. Right. And and it was seven spots, right? One, two, six. Three. Six. Six. Uh, there was also well, the white weenie deck and the Jeskai There was Golgari Explorer. Okay. It's a, it's roughly the same deck, I should say. Right. Um, but, but yeah, it's like... I, I really like this deck because it sort of redefines what an aggro deck can be in standard. Because um, normally you think aggro is just like, all right, I'm just going to play a bunch of early stuff and beat face, which certainly this deck does <laughs> uh, yes. um, pretty well. 
A but bit, a bit. it has some mid game. It has a little bit of late game because it keeps some of these controlling elements that, generally speaking, in an aggro deck you lose out on because you've stuffed your deck with so many creatures. And so for this, you're getting some of that uh, that siphon through your deck with all of these explore triggers. You're getting to sort of control your jaws a little bit uh, and dig. And then with Find Broker, with Find Finality, you're able to pull those effects back. You've got Ravenous Chupacabra as creature removal, but on a stick, and so you get a, a creature for a creature, basically. Right. You have Assassin's Trophy cast down both as great removal spells, and then you've got all of these like crazy good Planeswalkers that just fill out where you're kind of missing pieces by being able to destroy everything else. <laughs> like, yeah. It's insane. Like, it's actually very it. good. Um, I... I believe there's an answer somewhere to all this stuff. Yeah. Um, the biggest one, I'll just I'll throw it again. Ritual of Soot yeah. would do great work against this. There's a few creatures it doesn't affect at all, but that's but okay. They're fine. It gets around Wild Growth Walker's eventual yeah. uh, uh, growth spurt. We'd say <laughs> um, it's great. So yeah. yeah, that that card just gets better now that this deck is so big in my yep. opinion. I agree. Um, but yeah, that's really where I wanted to end you. I think that. Uh, do your homework. We put out the deck tick video, so go check that out. Yep. Um, but look into Golgari Aggro, Golgari Explore. Uh, if you think you can be a giant killer, send us a list. Yeah, please what, do. Where Where are this deck's weaknesses? What do you think? Uh, we'll We'll put our little tiny baby brains together and see what we can bring you. <laughs> but until then, um, tinker with it. Yep. That's all I'll say. That is all we will say. I do cool. really like uh, this deck, but I do hope it kind of tones down, down a little bit. Golgari. That's all. Um, all right, so uh, moving off of standard, we of course have our Cracker Pack sponsored by our good friends over at Grand Slam Comics Grand and Collectibles. Uh, we of course have our gold cards as well. Mine is Narc Amoeba. And mine is Knight of Autumn, even though I just bashed it to pieces. Yep. And we don't have a camera to show the cards to. Oh, you're right. I was going to do it anyway. The <laughs> habits are weird. Uh, I didn't get it, but I got a real good card. Nor did I. I got Connive Concoct, King Control of Target Creature with Power 2 or less. And concoct surveil three, then return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Oh, baby. Interesting card. I just saw yours. Um, Sorry. Yeah, I got March of the Very Multitudes. Yeah. Uh, I also have a House Guild Mage, which I love, but definitely March. <laughs> like, there is uh, no doubt. Yeah. So, <laughs> hmm. talk about picks here. Um, what you got? There's not, a, there's not a ton to go with. Yeah. Severed Strands is the only piece of removal I have in here. It's not the best removal. In the no. Um, so the two, I mean, the two cards I'm looking at, Severed Strands and Electrostatic Field. I like Field a lot. I do too. And the Is It deck. I mean, this just becomes immense. It, I mean, it's fantastic because yeah. it blocks so. It's awesome. So so well, and just deals incremental damage. Yeah. So I mean, Severed Strands works really well, though. It's very very good removal. Yeah. Um. So, I don't know. I think I would probably go with the field, just because it gives me an idea. You think? I don't Yeah, I'm nodding yes. Yeah, I think I'd go with the field, but Strange, is, Strange is awesome removal. It's not the best, though. Like, there's a lot better removal. Um, uh, it's really good in the Golgari deck. Yeah, yeah that's and that's why I think I I really would want to take it, because yeah, it also yeah. gives me... Actually, you know what? I think i got to change my mind. I'm so sorry, Kevin. I would take the field. But and that's probably the right. That was my first gut call, but I think strands is. I think strands might be better. I think strands might be better. What? No, I'm just kidding. That's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, take what you want to take. March of the multitudes is a hundred percent my pick. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there's nothing else. Uh, Hypothesis is sweet. Um, there's again the house guild mage. I dig. Uh, it's really uh, really whoa. good. How uh, is this Vraska emblem not your first pick? Excuse me. The Vraska emblem Ugh. is actually my first pick. Well, yeah. you heard it here first. We know nothing about limited. All yep. right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Uh, with that, I think we're going to wrap up this episode. Oh, yeah. uh, hopefully, the audio only thing goes well, but let us know what you guys think. If you hate it, tell if us. If you just really want to see our smiling faces. If you love it, calm down. <laughs> You shouldn't love it that much. If you don't care, you are just like me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. We are going to get out of here. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. And this has been It Resolves.